Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mira Lisa and this is the girl with your episode 43. Mm -hmm. And this is the Girl Miss Yarn episode 43. Uh, it's been almost six months since I sat down and talked to you guys the last. Um, as you can tell, I moved <laughs> to a different house, a different state. Um, and even though that I moved to Texas, if you have not seen my vlogs, I moved to Texas. Um, we are getting Seattle weather, so it's super overcast. It's been overcast for like three weeks in a row. Uh, this morning we had so much sunshine and now we're back to cloudy and rainy, but it's perfect lighting for um, doing a regular episode and catching up a little bit. I tried to record this so many times and yes, I'm still in my pajamas. I put a little bit of makeup so I look a little presentable, but I have tried to record this so many times and there's no way. Uh, my husband's office is right on the next room and I think there's no, I don't know, like insulation or sound barrier or I don't know what is it called, but there's two pieces of thin paper in between us and um, you can hear everything he talks the other day. They were talking something very serious and he could know my, my husband's business like to the dot. So I had to scratch that <laughs> and it's never a good time. So today is uh, Saturday, it's quite early. I'm still in pajamas, no breakfast. So I decided let's do a podcast really fast before everybody wakes up. So. Let's start with finished objects. <laughs> Fiona. I don't know what she's looking for. <laughs> this is my life these days, just playing with this cat. She loved this thing. <laughs> this is stick number three. <laughs> I don't know where the other two are, but uh, you hear a little bell. It's been playing with the cat, so she'll let me be. Let's start with, uh, I think how many finished objects I have. I have two, one that I already started talking about and then one that is completely new because of course it's been six months. But the number one is the Withmore Sweater by Amy Loden. And I have it right here. I was going to use my little Nina, but she is quite tall for this chair. But um, this is a pattern by Amy Loden. I made a size three. Um, I think is uh, quite um, uh, inclusive. I think it goes to, I didn't write it down to what circumference it goes, but oh my God. <laughs> Fiona. <laughs> the kitty went to bed. I have a new kitty. Her name is Fiona. She is almost four months old or past. We don't know. She is a rescue. And my daughter brought it from Puerto Rico. So we are enjoying living with a kitty, which is a lot. But let's go back to my first whip. Uh, sorry. F-O. F-O is finished. I wore it. <laughs> um, so I use a yarn wise. I use Chelsea Locks 801010 in the color Cider Donut. I mean, it's so good. So good. Um, and I bought three skeins to make this sweater. Um, this sweater is made or um, written for long sleeve, either, either tat or like tight. I forgot the name. Um, or Bishop um, C 
sleeves. So I decided to make short sleeves. So that's why I have more than 100 grams in between these two skeins. And then mohair wise, I use Satin Garn Silk Mohair in the color 4236. I bought five skeins of this. And as you can tell, I have two, uh, almost two full. So I have enough to make probably hat or with that uh, Silk Mohair make something uh, probably like a short crop sweater or something like that so that's the yarn that i use i use uh usi6 uh needles for the body i started with 2.5s here on the neck and then i moved to the six and then when i was about to or when i did my first cup for the short slip versions um it was quite tight i went to a size us size four for my rib and i did just a regular rib and it was quite tight on my arm right arm and um after going through a lump um lumpectomy and dissection of my lymph nodes i cannot have anything tight in that arm so i had to rip it off and then to do the cuff in a size uh us six needles and i'd say they look quite cute um they don't look as i wanted it a little bit more volume but i should have to do a couple increases before decreasing but um i love it i blocked it washed it um as you can remember i raised to get into um the end of the short and then when i went to the body i lost a little bit of steam because it was hot and you know more hair and whatever so that's it um what else uh, like i said it's kind of fun to knit with um i thought i thought it's quite elegant um i don't know if you can look at the little lace um you have a little bit of lace on the sleeve so you have one chart for the sleeves and um i just i just found it that it was just such a beautiful um sweater to have and i wanted it to make it in a jewel tone so i think it looks more tomato red than what it is it's just probably a little deeper although it's, it looks quite moody right there and i think this yarn is not available she doesn't um dye this color in anymore um, i think she brought this color once for rhinebeck and um i snatched it because i thought it was so i don't know interesting and i don't know like dark and moody and like blonde <laughs> anyway so that's my first one to stick with more sorry let me get the other one <laughs> okay so i have two more uh finished objects i thought i have two like total but i have three so let's talk about the Komorebi by um, Poor Egg Picks, and it's right here. I think the last time I talked to you guys, I was finishing the first set of bubbles that are right here, and I was, I was loving it. I think I love this entire sweater. Um, it's just, it was just a joy. It's a, definitely an intermediate to advanced. I would say, I would say intermediate. If you know how to follow a short you will have no problem um following this pattern it's well written um i have no problems following shorts it's it looks quite complicated but the stitches are not complicated at all um it's just just to just follow the instructions to the dot and i did i don't have not even one mistake in this sweater and i feel so accomplished after trying um you know this is not my first lace sweater that i've made but it's the, it's the first one that is entire lace it's just like no stocking in no <laughs> so it was it was intense i would say it was intense um i use the casa sol bamboo large yarn this is not the color but i use the color uh rosa coral this is uva intenso but i wanted it to show i don't know where the actual ball remainder is at but i wanted you guys to see the shine on this um on this yarn it's quite splitty it's a couple of strands to make 
the yarn of course and it was a little hard to knit with it and then just make sure that i am grabbing all, <laughs> all the you know all the, the strands uh whenever i'm doing a knit or pearl whatever so i use two um balls or skeins of this yarn in the color <laughs> and this is a 400 uh, meters or 200 grams um, yarn so I used two I think I paid $18 per skein so it was quite I will say cheap of um, of a project I have not blocked it to be honest and I don't think I will be I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I probably will put it in the washer and um, just put it to dry in my blocking mats. But I'm a little, I'm a little worried that's gonna lose its shape or it's gonna become something else. Um, let's talk about needles. I use US size four needles. I didn't gaze swatch. Um, I did just kind of like just to just see how it was gonna look. I will say. Um, I did a size a large when I bought this pattern she only have three sizes small medium and large I think I talk about that but since then she <clears throat> came out with <clears throat> sorry uh, bigger sizes and she goes now to 5xl or a 56 inch bust if I'm not mistaken so I follow all the instructions um, I did uh not stretchy bind off and at when i wear it i regret it but it have kept its shape it have not grown a lot and um i just feel like i wasted my time with this twisted rib that it was 2.5 inches off and i always have to tuck in inside of my pants because um the band doesn't go through my hips it's just um it doesn't have the stretch to go through it i don't know if, and i have i have hips again okay. my hips are not this they're a little wider <laughs> so it just hit right on the top of my hips and i wish i everybody can see my beautiful twisted rib but um i always have to tuck it in and uh, to to on the flip side even though you cannot see the twister rib when i tuck it in um i don't feel like it grows too much i have not grown too much of me so that's that's one thing and then the other thing that i did i shortened the sleeve so after going through so many sets of bubbles um i was just like you know what i don't want to. <laughs> i don't want to so i follow the chart all the way until you started for the bubbles and then i just went ahead and uh did the twister rib and it's kind of like a shorty a shorter sleeve and it's quite cute quite cute so i love it so much i feel like um expert knitter now like i am in a new group like i move from um the that slow pace runner <laughs> group to the more advanced um, I have to say, uh, I was quite intimidated when I started it. I thought I was not going to be able to finish because I have done other, I have tried to attempt other sweaters that are all lace, but um, like for instance, the Poet by Sari Norland that I have it right here. I have this sweater right here and I started this three years ago and I thought uh, I was there and I think I, I, I was, it was okay. I just... It was a lot a lot of charts a lot of things to follow and the like so i was not <laughs> i was not prepared i think now i am and i resuscitated it i put it back into a project bag and then the yarn is there and i know where i am in the chart now so we're probably we'll talk about that one not today although i already did briefly but um it's a whip that i want to work on again so that's it Komorebi super fun and if you <laughs> if you don't if you, if you feel that this isn't even a go 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 for it but it's so pretty I wore it with um kind of like a sports bra cami 
bra that I like to use and uh, for me is enough. If somebody see a roll or two, it's not my problem at all. <laughs> okay, let's talk about my third finish object and I should have like 10 because it's been a long time since I have recorded a podcast but this is the Rota sweater, sleeveless sweater by Irene Lynn. It's a beautiful, beautiful kind of vest. Um, you can use it as a vest or you can use it just as a top just like I use it. I thought about wearing it with a long sleeve the other day um just for an extra warmth um she uh the designer came out with two versions a sleeveless and a long sleeve and i have seen this kind of um sweater or kind of knit chunky knits um very open kind of like holes um sweaters in the runway for a while now so like two seasons or something like that um I wish I have done the long sleeve and probably I can probably unravel this and make this long, the long sleeve or like three quarters um, beak, but I cannot do it because the yarn was, it was a nightmare. Let me, let me grab the yarn. Hold. The yarn, the yarn was so bad to work with. Um, so I use this yarn, it's called Circulo Natural and is, I don't know what color, I don't care, I tossed the ball band. Um, this is supposed to be a worsted weight, it's 100% cotton, Brazilian cotton or something like that. It cost me $15, I bought two. I used one and a little bit of the second one. Um, and this is rope. <laughs> I would say, this is perfect for macrame or crochet, uh, to make yourself like a bag or something like that but to make a top it was difficult my hands were sweaty it was so hard to make any kind of stitch um, I wanted it to be in cotton so you know I did this to myself but it was hard it was so hard to work with this yarn so even though the actual garment is quite cute I will never say to get that yarn Oop never don't do it it's so bad <laughs> such a bad yarn uh you live and you, you learn right um but let's go back to the sweater i think this sweater it comes into like the sizes are not very inclusive i think it goes to 53 inches bust so that's the size six i did the size three right um and um i have a couple of issues with this design number one i decided i i learned quickly that i should have done in a different yarn i learned quickly that i had to probably make the effort to do the long sleeve it will be more durable although this one i can use it with a long sleeve or i don't know you know i can use it um layer layer it up but because it's cotton it's not going to be too warm um, I decided to knit the crop version. I was like, yes. So the crop version is up to here. Right, right there. Right here. So that's the crop version. And that was under my boobs. A little bit under my boobs. Um, so by here you were supposed to do the rib so I decided to do one more repeat do like the long version and this is quite crap on me like this is hitting I say this hits my waist and I'm a short torso person <laughs> just saying um, so I had to do one more repeat and then um, I love this detail the detail of the cable right there after you um start working the ground so let's talk about construction you start with the back if i'm not mistaken you start with the back and then you work in the front so you work one shoulder and then another shoulder and then you start working back and forth you work back and forth in the back and the front until you reach here when you reach here you start working in the round it's quite interesting very easy pattern to follow to be honest um 
you memorize it right away. So after you start working in the round, then you do how many repeats you want and you have that interest detail of um, a cable right there. And then it ends up, what's this? I think it's just like the yarn has like a knot. But you end up with a split hem situation, which is chic, 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 chic. Anyway, so after that, <clears throat> I went into the armhole. And that's when I started to have issues. Um, I picked the amount of stitches that she asked for my size. And I thought there were too many. Um, when I wore this, the rib doesn't lay flat on my body i just think it should have done like a or i should have picked like 10 to 8 8 to 10 inches or less just to just kind of like i don't know just it just feel it doesn't lay flat on my body so i just have a little let me put it on why even try to explain okay so right now I have, i'm in my pajamas <laughs> pajama podcast so you see right here it just doesn't lay flat on my body it just feels like if it was a little less stitches it will have been um it will have been cuter i don't know maybe six inches less eight inches less like less 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 stitches and then the neck um i wish i have done also a little bit bit less um stitches it lays better but the back, I don't know if you can tell here, it just doesn't lay flat on my body. So that's the only thing. Just check your stitch count um, and then just adjust. If I will make this again, I will make it in the long sleeve version. Like I, um, yeah. I don't wanna say I regret this one. I just regret that I, um, that I use cotton. I should have done wool just to lay it uh, over my shirt. But I thought about using it just, um, you know, as as a shirt, as a top. So that's it. Those are my finished objects. And let's talk about my whips. Hello from the future. You guys know this is a chit show, and I mess up this video as quite often and I usually push them and make them or re-record the entire thing in two weeks but we don't have time for that because Vlogmas starts on Thursday so if it's not done today it's not gonna be done and we need to put out an episode so I'm gonna talk about my next or my first work in progress which is the Luna T but I'm gonna do a little behind or pre-story to my Luna T so you understand where I'm coming from I went <laughs> To the New York Chip and Wool Festival in Rhinebeck, and I was staying at Socrates, New York. Well, when I arrived in New York City, I noticed that I didn't have a whip to work on. I was trying to make eye contact to, with all these knitters, and they were looking at me, but they were using their hands constantly because they were knitting. And I was the only knitter who didn't pack her knitting. Okay, just saying. I am the worst person, so I had to remed remediate or correct that right away so i went to the perfect blend in socrates where i was staying and i saw this yarn which is knitting for olive in the cotton merino um yarn and this is in the color rust i got four skeins and i had um yarn oh sorry my needles usi six needles to start making a Luna tea. So I went home and I started to work on this yarn and I didn't like it, it was too thin. And when I read, you know, all the information, this is a light fingering yarn. So for me, I thought I need to bulk this up. So there were some Sterlinas there that they got rated by Maisie and Christina from Chelsea Locks in Little Miss Knits YouTube channels here. <laughs> and I was like, I cannot use that black with this, although it will have, I have done that before. I have done, um, I don't know if you guys remember my ranunculus. I used kind of like, um, it was, what color? It was just like, was it a burgundy? And I used black. You guys remember that? Maybe I'll wear it next time. Um, 
and I have done a couple times just to blend uh, yarn so you guys know that I love that but what I found when I went to buy another yarn to use it with this is this Luna yarn to use it with my Luna for my Luna tea and this is a Sterlina that has some um, uh, sequins on it I'm not gonna lie this is a little scratchy it's not the end of the world but you will feel it so just a fair warning so I decided to combine these two I asked my roommates and they doubted my decision but let me show you how the sweater end up looking here it is do you like it Oh my god, I love, 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 love. So, like I said, I use those two yarns and I use USI 6 Needles Addis Metal when I started. And then when I divide it for the sleeves, I switch to wood. So far, I have not seen too much difference on my gauge, but probably I will. I don't know. Um, it's a broken rib. Um, love the way she described or she did the increases so you have this little detail here and then you do the increases on both sides until you achieve the x amount of uh, stitches that it, uh, it calls for your size i'm making a size four it goes up all the way up to a size 17 or i think it's like 63 inch bust which is quite in inclusive i will say um it has a little negative ease and um you know i did the amount of um increases that i needed quite easy to follow i i'll say i thought it was i, it, I was going to be able to i don't know i thought i needed to like mark all my increases but the reality that i didn't need to do that because this row and then this row will be an increase so um yeah so if, if I didn't need to write it down just just to count and because it's broken you know one row you're doing like two by two by two need to pull, pull two and then the other round you do knit so quite quite fascinating I would have to say um, I went ahead and I divided for the sleeves and it was too short from here to here it was like like digging into my armpit and um i was so sad that i had to go back rip it off and do one more repeat and i thought um it looked quite better it looked a little bit better um and a little bit with a little bit more ease then i went into how fast can i knit just to raise to finish it and i forgot that you have some decreases right here on the side just to make it more like a waist shaping just just to kind of like really uh hug your body um you can do the decreases for that waist shaping um, as she suggests or she give you like a little um math formula just for you to know what is your gauge and then what do you want to achieve and whatever um and then know how many decreases and how to do those decreases so it's not too tight or too loose but i lost my window when i went into motor <laughs> like you know like let's just go ahead and speed this out and um i had like two inches in after i separated for the sleep so i was just like should i actually need that waist shaping i probably will but because i am using this yarn it's a little bit scratchy i think it's gonna be okay if i don't have that waist shaping hold on let me see my computer to see what else i have to say um yes okay so after you separate for the sleeves you don't have any kind of short german short rows or any kind of like um length for your back but she does it after you separate for the sleeves so you go back and forth a couple of rows just to give you a little bit more space on the back or i have a little back shaping which i thought it was kind of genius to be honest and then what else and then oh and i now have to go to 10 inches and after i finish that i'm going to go ahead and cast on or 
finish the sleeves and with the sleeve you can do just a regular sleeve or have them just kind of like hug your body as well so you have some decreases in there as well so so far so good I actually love this tee it's definitely it's gonna be a basic even though I have like the glitter on but you guys know I can go to HEB which is a supermarket here in Texas wearing this because I'm extra like that but besides that that's it let's go back to the past to my pajamas and talk about the next week next week <laughs> So let's talk about the champagne cardigan. This is a design by Petit Nits. I have it right here, but I'm gonna place it here on the screen. Um, I am making a size medium. It goes all the way up to a size 5XL or uh, 68 inches wide. It does have quite a lot of room. It's quite an oversized kind of like grandpa uh, cardigan. I love, love cardigans. I have made one cardigan and we all know what happened to that cardigan. And we're not gonna talk about that again. Oh my God, the sun is out. You see, lighting is a shit show. I am using a yarn that um, Christina from Chelsea Lux gifted me. Um, she gifted me this Chelsea Coop yarn and the Cozy DK. This is 400 and 240 yards for skein. I have four. I don't have enough. <laughs> I have to buy more. And then um, I have two of this rose gold in the mohair. And um, I probably need one more. I thought this was going to be such a fun knit. Oh my God. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I get better. Um, so I thought it was gonna be so fast. Well, it is. Um, I just it's just a lot of knitting and purling. So a lot of purling. If you're not into purling or going back and forth, and you prefer to seek, I don't know what to tell you. Um, Right now, I just separated for the sleeves. I have just kind of like an inch and I have to go down to 10 more inches. I tried it on, it's quite oversized and quite beautiful and I love the yarn. It looks, it feels like a dream. It's so squishy. Look at all the speckles and all that. It reminds me of some cardigans that I saw at the Chanel 2023 spring collections. A lot of pink, a lot of knitwear, a lot of sets, a lot of like camis with cardigans. And I thought, I mean, yes. Um, I have to go <laughs> and do 10 more, 10 more inches um, before I do the rib. Then you have the sleeves and then you pick up all the, you know, all the stitches around the front to make just that kind of like a finish edge, um, rib edge. So, so far, so good. Um, you have a couple of increases. So the increases are very easy to memorize, but because she wants that cardigan look, on the front she has you you know go back and forth and then do some increases in on the eighth or x amount of um stitches you're going to add one right after you start your um your row just to keep it going down and just like have that you know kind of like nice v-shaped to the front but that's it i am on my ball um the DK this one number two and I'm quite worried and I'm almost done with let me show you with the mohair so I think I definitely have to buy one or two more so there you go very little very little and then this um, I didn't gaze watch I'm using a size US 7 Addy needles and um, I, I think it's looking perfect so so those are my whips. I was going to talk about the poet, but I did already. Um, I have not done too much on it because uh, even, even though I know where I am right now and I am, 
just you know like i can just like press the gas and and go i just don't like the two shorts on it so i am taking a little break i'll say from it and um yeah but let's talk about let's talk about rhinebeck and show you my rhinebeck haul and um talk about some of the questions that you guys asked me about rhinebeck okay my my room is full of sunshine now after being so cloudy and my lab is full of skeins of yarn so i want to show you guys briefly what i got at rhinebeck and we're going to start with suburban stitches i was looking for something quite neutral with some speckles and what better than this yarn which is called sea smoke and you have kind of grayish blue in it and you have you know a lot concentration here and there but you also have a little bit of gray so i thought um making just kind of like a basic um tea a knitted tea will be perfect and that's why i bought two because i don't want to have too much and then not use it because i'm gonna have extras and then from her as well i got <clears throat> this color marshmallow is a cream with speckles and the speckles are a little bit of yellow neon and then you have some um pinks very light let me let me open this up you see there so i thought for the same just making something quite um basic and probably kind of like a little crop or something like that will work perfectly and then with my friend anna and i am missing one okay there you go i got this primrose color in morticia morticia and then we got or i got this color she got another color combo um we got this um primrose homestead sport in the wild horses and animal combo so we <clears throat> are gonna make ourselves some matchy matchy sweaters but we have not decided what we're gonna make so that is still pending and besides that i got this kick and wool yarn and i don't know what's the color of this this is that is a crumb it's um 90 percent merino and then 10 percent um linen it's my colors you guys know and because it had linen on it of course i was just like oh, of course and then and then <laughs> i got so much yarn from christina it's not even funny and i don't have here what i have or, or she gave me for the um champagne guardian i blanked out um this is a mystery dye or this is like one of those that you or she have two of and it doesn't have a color per se i know this is um fingering but exactly what kind of fingering it i don't remember so i'm gonna text her to see if she knows what's the um what's the deed for this one but I mean, can we even? I was like, yes. Um, she also gifted me. I was so spoiled. Um, the this one is uh, eighty ten ten in the color passion fruit, and it's just kind of like a peachy pink. So god. And can we can we can we talk about this like? yeah the light is being blown out i'm sorry but i look at this and i was just like you have some blues in here can you see the blues and then you have some dark and moody it's everything and then i also got this chelsea coupe and um this fingering a1010 um also to make shirts and uh stuff for texas weather but here you can see all the speckles in all the colors so 
so good. And then I think that's it. Oh, and then I have two of each. I didn't bought this at Rhinebeck, but I will call it a Rhinebeck. <laughs> Hold on. Um, I'll call it a Rhinebeck um, or part of my haul because I went and I saw this and they were gone the next day that's why i got that luna sparkly yarn because this was gone but i of course bought it from grace and pearl and um this is in the color beige silver and then i think this is uh pale gold and i am planning of course to use this with um a regular yarn just to bring it a little speckle into it or not speckle just like a little sort of so i plan to use this with a little um another yarn just to kind of like mar marl it a little bit um and you guys know i love to use two colors to make a new fabric i have done that with i did that with my piece of silver um and i did that with my um what is it called with my uh, ranunculus you guys remember that i use a very a uh, shiny sterlina and i use a black mohair so good i love that sweater i should wear it today so that is yarn wise um i got also from who was this okay so i saw uh at the perfect blend there was this um set of stitch markers for rhyme bag and i kick myself that I didn't get them but I went ahead and ordered a line the only thing that this pack it's from Bird, Birdie, Birdie Parker I'll put it right there on the screen the only thing that this one didn't have is the um it didn't have the apple for New York so I was a little sad but besides that, I went um, antiquing. <laughs> oh, okay. And I got this thing that I want to hang on my um, on my wall. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why this is here. See, I have not put it on my wall. <laughs> but it's a shadow work but it's kind of like a quilted shadow work and I have never seen this and of course I jumped into buying it because I went um, antiquing one day <clears throat> that I was about to pass out because food was not <laughs> in my system so I had to go get some food um, I also got this set of uh, their coasters and a napkin um, for coasters and a napkin, I paid $8 for it and I loved it. It's handmade. It's like, I mean, and you guys know, I mean my blue period right now. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then I saw this. And you guys know, I love a plate these days. <laughs> so of course I needed to have. A plate let me show you did that did you, you can see the plates over there that's my little corner but I love myself a plate these days I have a cold, just one just one there I have like three more I've been collecting them but isn't that cute look what it says All right anyway so that's that's it um that's it for now. I think it's quite long, so I'm going to go ahead and see what my family needs food-wise. Edit this video, and I see you guys this Thursday. There's this Thursday. Can I talk? This Thursday, cause Vlogmas is happening. <laughs> Bye.